In this lesson, we're collecting like terms, and um, I've got a cup here that's got an A on it, and I've got everything in here except uh, the letter A. But here's a nice analogy for you. I'm thinking of containers when I collect like terms. Um, the only if this was if 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 the algebra I was dealing with had some uh, pronumerals with a, a capital A in them, for example, I could collect every time I saw a plus two two A. I could put two A's into this cup here, and if for example I saw plus fifteen A. I could throw them in there and and then I could peer inside the cup and if I added two and then I added another 15 I would see 17 A's inside that cup. Okay so we're collecting them together in a basket if you like um, and that's my analogy that I use. So here's a blank cup it has nothing on it and when I look at a question, I'm thinking about, well, when I, uh, what kind of containers or what kind of baskets do I need to collect these terms into? So, um, for example, I might have, uh, whoops, I might have an X. I don't know whether the camera can see that or not. I don't know. I just wrote an X on that cup. All right. So, common letter we use. If I collect five X's, I put them in here. And then if I have a subtract, for example, I'm told to take three out. So I reach in and take three out and I put five in and I throw three of them out. I don't need them anymore. We'll look inside the cup and I see two X's and that's the tidy up step. Um, and it really wouldn't matter if I wrote on here A, B squareds. If I was collecting a, b squared, so it would all go into this cup. If I was adding them, I'd throw them in. If it was subtracting them, I'd take them out. Now there's a problem when I go into negative territory because we're in a really physical world. And if I had, if I was told to collect five of these things and then throw seven of them out, I stare into my cup. I don't see minus two. A, B squareds in there. but So this analogy breaks down at some point, but it's useful in the very beginning to help you get the idea of what it means to collect like terms. So I'm going to jump behind the light board and put my cup down. I'm going to get behind the light board and show you a few moves here and what to watch out for and the common mistakes I see. And, and by watching this video, I hope that you get a sense of what to do and um, also avoid the little pitfalls that other students are tripping up in. Okay. Okay, recording in three, two, one. In this lesson, we're going to talk about collecting like terms. Uh, I think in the introduction I used some cups. I like thinking about collecting like terms as a tidy up step. It makes life a little bit easier. Okay, and just using numbers, let's think about um, what that tidying up step looks like. And I think in a previous video I might have used 3 times 5 plus uh, 5. Okay. Uh, that seems to be the same to me as if we've got 3 times 5 is 15 plus 5 is 20. Why couldn't I rewrite this as 4 times 5? Okay, and that's the kind of thinking that we're using here. But we're focusing in on the letters. And we need to look, to tidy up, we need to look for... A couple of things. We need to have the same number one, the same letters. Okay? And for example, we've got uh, two 
time. I'm going to use a dot here to represent multiply and I'm just going to step this one out really simply. Um, we've got a2 which is our coefficient in this term. We've got a times b times c here. Um, now just be careful that the order of the letters doesn't really matter. Okay? Um, just like when you back up in this step, it doesn't matter if you go 4 times 5 or 5 times 4. Because we're multiplying, we'll end up in the same spot. So we need to see the same letters to collect them up. Okay? And we'll talk about in a moment what collecting up means. But the second thing we need to look for, and it might pay to change the color on my pen, you ne also need to see the same powers or uh, indices. Okay? And an example here, we've got 2a times a, we might see that as 2a squared. All right? This, let's not get confused with the coefficient here. We want the index here, and the index is a 2, uh, meaning that this a, whatever the pronumeral is, we've got a times a. Um, be really careful, because here's the trap. You're looking at the questions, and you see 2a squared b. Now that's not the same as 2ab squared. You can't collect those terms up. They are different terms. And you have to be aware of that and watch out. Watch out for those little numbers or those indexes. And um, then you should be, should be right. You shouldn't make too many mistakes. Now let's actually think about what the tidy up step is. What are we doing? So when we tidy up or collect the like terms, we are either adding or subtract. Subtracting. Um, so be really careful. For example, let's have a look at some really simple examples. We've got 5a plus 2a plus b plus 8b. Now, I often do things like this. Uh, I underline the like terms. They are the same. And uh, then I might put a little star next to these guys here because they're, they're the same. The same letter, same combinational letter, same power. We might even put a 1 in front of here because that is 1b and that's helpful in collecting the like terms. So when we collect up these like terms, we've got five A's and we've got two more. So we're going to write that as 7A plus, uh, we said we had one B here and another eight there. So that's nine in total. Okay. And I've got to tell you, this is your answer. And I instruct people to stop when they write this because they try to mash everything together and they're so used to just having um, one answer. They're not used to setting things like that out, this out, and this becomes your answer. So when I, when I, when you get to this step, tell yourself, stop. You have the answer. Now, for example, for example, you might get uh, something in the textbook and you can always rearrange things as long as you keep the signs the same. So you might see something like 7AB plus 32 subtract, I'm going to say 1AB plus 4. That might be written out in your textbook. There's nothing stopping you from writing 
and organizing things uh, to make life easy for yourself by putting things together. As long as you, you keep the signs in the same spot. So I'm going to write minus AB there. Um, and if this was me writing it in my textbook, I might actually write 32 plus 4. Put the numbers together. The numbers are just hanging around the end. They're the constants. We can just write them down. And we're at the final step here. We do a little bit of tidying up here. And we've got seven ABs and we're told to subtract one lot of AB. So that becomes six AB plus the numbers that are just hanging around the end. I often write them last plus 36. And that is my answer. So I tell myself to stop. I don't need to do anything more. And that uh, honestly is all you need to do when you're asked to collect the like terms. All right? Nothing more than that. Uh, and the reason why, of course, is that you haven't been given a value for A or a value for B. So you can't do anything else at this stage. You need to be told a little bit more about the values of those pronumerals to allow you to do the substitution and evaluation. So it's really critical that I've written it here and I've made emphasize that as much as I can that you tell yourself to, to stop once you collected the like terms. That is the instruction. You're only asked to collect the like terms, nothing more.